story we're going to cover is an odd one. It's one that I saw pop up a couple times on the Conspiracy Iceberg. I figured there's nothing to it. There's no resources behind it. A lot of people requested it, and I said, I'll look into it. It wasn't something I was too thrilled about. And then I looked into it, and I was like, okay, <laughs> there's something here. So the conspiracy theory is that the Sentinelese, the Sentinelese are guarding alien artifacts. So to get into it, I'm going to have to give you some background to who the Sentinelese are. There is an island off the coast of India, the Andaman Islands, and there's multiple islands there. And there's, there's a lot of tribes there. I think there's like four or five tribes there that are throwbacks. Now, out of most of those tribes, there are trade and contact with the Indian government. And they're like, yeah, we know you guys are like way back. You guys are still using spears and stuff like that. But we want to have regular contact with you. And the people on those islands are like, yeah, okay, you know, that's fine. You know, they're, it's, a, it's beneficial to both sides. One, India gets to contact the people, you know, and then the people on the islands get food and supplies and stuff from India. However, one of the islands, North Sentinel Island, has a tribe on there called the Sentinelese. They are completely, for the most part, uncontacted by the modern world. They know we exist and we know they exist, but there's been no formal contact between the two. There's been attempts, but there's been no, like, shaking hands, sending ambassadors, stuff like that. India has said... This island's off limits. They don't want to to talk to us. They're a fully functioning, basically prehistoric society. They don't want to talk to us. There have been attempts where people have gone there and two of the so two of the elders from the Sentinelese came and met the sailors. They ended up getting diseases, the Sentinelese, because they they're they're a such a throwback. It's the same thing that when the Europeans came to America. And so the government of India was like, okay, we can't be messing with these people. Like, they're a fully functioning tribe. We're only going to make things worse. And they have tribes like this. Brazil has a couple of tribes like this. South America overall has a couple of tribes like this. Where the government actually says, don't go near them. Let them be. There was a time where some sailors came to the island and they gave them, like, pigs and some toys and things like that. The Sentinelese came out, killed the pig, and buried it. They'd never seen a pig before. They didn't know what it was. They've only really lived on this island. Killed the pig, basically ran people off of spears. There have been times where the Sentinelese will come out and they'll look like they're going to accept the tr explorers. And then they chase them off of spears. They shoot arrows at them. So they're a very, very, like, closed-off tribe. They don't want to get to know people on the mainland. So this guy, just a couple days ago felt that it was he was in his heart to go preach Christianity to the Sentinelese. You're not supposed to go there. You're, it's completely illegal to go there. He hired some fishermen, said, "Let me take me to the Sentinelese Islands. I'll talk about Jesus. They killed him. They just lit him up full of arrows. And India, in response, arrested the fishermen. Because India has said that they've killed other... There A couple of years ago, there was a fishing boat that the two fishermen fell asleep in their boat and it drifted too close to North Sentinel Island. They lit them up. The Sentinelese fired a bunch of arrows, killed them. India said, we consider that island to be a sovereign state. You invaded their border. They have the right to do that. We're not going to interfere with that island. So India really has their back. Now let's go into a little bit more history of the Sentinelese, and then we're going to get into the conspiracy theory, because this all wraps up together. Sentinelese, they believe they're about 40,000 years old. Not the people on the island, but I mean the civilization, somewhere around there. They believe they traveled from Africa to the island. I don't know how, but somehow they got from Africa to this island. I guess if you have 40,000 years, you can kind of do anything. We don't know how many of them are on the island. Estimates have ranged over time anywhere from 40 to 500. So sometimes there's peaks in the population, sometimes there's valleys, but we don't know because we've never been there. We can fly drones overhead, we can sit on the beach, not on their beach because they'll kill us, but you can sit in a boat, look at them from a distance. They don't know how to write. They don't even know how to make fire. What we can tell is they wait for lightning to strike and they keep the fire going for as long as they can. Very, very primitive people. There's a little bit of relation... Between, like I said, there's other tribes on the other islands in that area. There's a little bit of relation of the language between the Sentinelese and one other tribe, but it's such, still such a far gap, they can't communicate with each other. So they're basically cut off even from their closest neighbor. We know that they 
anything that washes up on the island, they use. We've seen them with metal, but they don't know how to do metal working. So when we see them with metal, we go, oh, they must be getting debris that washes up on the island, making these spearheads, making whatever. <laughs> Dude. And you're thinking, Jason, you're reading a Wikipedia article about North Sentinel Island. I'm bored. No. Because this gets really good. Trust me. I just have to set this stuff up because we're going to go back to this stuff. The idea, that's the setup. The idea that the, the Sentinelese are guarding alien artifacts. Let's take a look at that. Now, of course, the planet's been around for billions of years. If there were ever aliens moving through the... So let's assume the aliens are... The aliens come from other planets, not interdimensional, things like that, for the sake of this story. Aliens coming through the galaxy and things like that. Over the course of four billion years, it's possible that artifacts and ships, I mean, you have such a long period of time, things are dropped off on our planet. And actually, there have been some scientists that to look for proof of alien life, they're not looking up into the sky because that's such a small window of time. They want to look at the Earth and Mars and Venus for energy signatures that they believe would be coming from alien craft. And they said, well, we know Venus is basically a big old hot swamp, not not a literal swamp like I used to believe. I said this in an earlier episode. When I was a kid, I was taught that Venus had lush rainforest jungles full of dinosaurs. And that's why it was so cloudy. And I believed that until I was about 15. And I would quote that all the time to people. And no one was ever like, you're an idiot. That's not true. And I always wondered why... Whenever people talked about looking for life on other planets, I'm like, why are you worried about microbes on Mars? There's dinosaurs on Venus. And I literally would tell people that, and they would never question it. But anyway, so there's no jungles on Venus. Any alien craft that crashed on Venus would have been liquefied by now. You know, given the time period of millions of years. But if an alien ship or an alien satellite or alien artifact was crashed or left behind on Mars or Earth, we should be able to detect some sort of energy signature from it. And that's one of the things with the idea of an alien artifact being left on North Sentinel Island. If it was if it was just a piece of metal that had like, you know, alien graffiti on it, that's very interesting, but it doesn't really help. It would be like, yeah, okay, an alien ship crashed here. But what people are looking for when we talk about alien artifacts isn't necessarily just a, a hunk of metal. It would be something that would be incontrovertible proof of alien technology. Is it alien technology? piece of metal is a piece of metal. And you go, oh, an alien must have crashed here. But a, a, a power source or a weapon or something like that is what we would really want to find. Something that would change, not just change our view of the universe and say, yes, there is living stuff out here. Here's a picture of an alien, like, you know, a Betty Boop alien on the side of a ship. Or, you know, like how they used to paint the World War II bombers. That would just be proof there's aliens. We would want some sort of artifact that would give us free energy or teach us the secrets of the universe or something like that. And if those things existed on this planet, we should pick up the energy signature. We haven't on North Sentinel Island. So you're thinking, well, Jason, okay, then I guess you are saying there's no alien artifacts on North Sentinel Island. And I say, don't interrupt me. I'm not done. And I'll, I'll go back to this, a little bit of pushback on detecting for alien signatures. It's possible that there would be alien signatures in our solar system. We just don't have the technology to decipher what it is. We don't know what it is. If they're not using nuclear or chemical or something like that, they may be using some sort of power source or artifact that's undetectable. So so a little bit of pushback on that. I'm not so sold on the idea that if an alien artifact was here, we would detect it, but we're giving it our best shot trying to detect these things. I don't think there's alien technology on North Sentinel Island. I don't believe the Sentinelese are protecting alien technology. This is what I think. And I I have some interesting... I don't want to say evidence, but I have some interesting facts to support this. Let's say I was an alien, and I wanted to put something, hide something on Earth that nobody would find. You could say you would could put it on a place that was going to be guarded by a bunch of prehistoric people that wouldn't know what it was. So they, you wouldn't have to worry about them dealing with it. However, here's the thing. You wouldn't necessarily know when you put it there. That somebody else, a more powerful government, wasn't just going to show up and take it. You could say, I'm going to put it here and these people around it will never know what it is. But there's always a chance that somebody else will just go in. If this tribe was located anywhere else in the world at any other point in time, they would have just been taken over. Like all the other indigenous people on the planet. 
It's just because this isn't a, a super strategic area where, you know, all of this stuff started really coming out in like the 1800s where they're like, I oh, just kind of leave them alone. But if it was a more strategic area, and if it was in the 1400s when these people were discovered and all this stuff going on, they would have just been taken over. Nowadays, there's enough land and enough resources and stuff like that that they don't have to deal with this island that has nothing natural. So if you were an alien race and you wanted to hide something, yes, hiding it among an indigenous population who don't know what it is is a good idea. But if they had done this with the Navajo, it was just the Navajo got steamrolled, we would have found this huge reactor. If it landed there accidentally, if an alien didn't purposely put it there, if it landed there accidentally, then the same thing. Eventually, the chances of somebody stumbling across it, and if it landed there accidentally, it could have landed anywhere. It could have landed in New York City. It could have landed in North Central Island. In New York City, they would have known what it was. On North Central Island, they wouldn't have, but then they're not necessarily guarding it. It's just a piece of wreckage that's there, and they're there as well. But what if the alien knew that no one was going to go there? The alien knew for a fact that for hundreds of years, no one was ever going to go there. That group of people were going to be left alone by the government of India. They knew for a fact that was going to happen. You would put it there because you'd have the best of both worlds. You'd have a group of people who would have no idea what it was. They'd probably stay away from it if it was too creepy. And you knew no one would going to discover it. You would actually be able to say, we know eventually they're going to discover it in the year like 2100 or 2055 or whatever. But... We're going to place this here now. We know if for the next 500 years, no one's going to mess with it because of all these policies with India and the the way the people are structured and all that stuff. Now, of course, this... Okay, (laughs) we're, we're coming to the end here. Of course, they would have no way of predicting if India was going to go there tomorrow, 400 years ago, or 300 years in the future. Aliens wouldn't know that, but time travelers would. They're not guarding alien artifacts on North Sentinel Island. They're guarding a time machine. Hear me out. And let me back up here. If this conspiracy is true, I'm not saying that it's true, but let's assume that they are guarding something for the sake of the narrative. They're guarding a time machine because in the future, they would know for a fact how history would play out. They would know that they they would try to make contact with the tribe. The tribe wouldn't want it. The government of India would step in and say, nobody contact this tribe. People from the future would know how event, and they would they would know for a fact in the year 2049, eventually someone does go to the island, and that's when we move the time machine. But for now, we're going to put it here. It's perfect location because it is completely isolated. It's an island that you cannot get to. You will be arrested if you go to and you survive. If you die, you die. But it's close enough to the mainland that you can leave the island and get to the mainland. Sri Lanka, India, wherever you want to go. It's possible that the people, the North Sentinelese, were brought from the past by the time travelers, bring them from the past in Africa and put them on the island. That's why the language doesn't match up. They're there to guard the time machine. They said, we're going to go back to Africa. We're going to get this tribe of people. We're going to put them on this island. We'll take care of them. We'll give them the metal they need. Maybe make a lightning strike every once in a while to give them fire. We'll watch over them because they're going to protect this time machine that will give us access to come and go as we please where we're completely concealed. We're close enough to the mainland. And you go, okay, Jason, interesting theory. But do you have any proof? I'll say this. I have more proof of that theory than of alien artifacts. And this is why. In 2004, the Indian Ocean earthquake The Boxing Day earthquake. Massive earthquake. Huge tsunami. Hundreds of thousands of people killed. Just devastated the coastlines of that area. North Sentinel Island, the earthquake was so powerful, it lifted it up three to seven feet in some areas. Just completely crumpled the ground underneath it. Massive tsunami. Hit North Sentinel Island. Hit the rest of the Andaman Islands. As the world was starting to put everything back together after the tsunami. Officials in India said, they're, they're all dead. The, the Sentinelese are all dead. The other tribes on those islands are all dead. That tsunami wiped out all the coastlines in this area. Those islands had no chance. Let's get a helicopter, fly overhead, and confirm what we already know. Helicopter flies overhead. They see a villager come out, shake his spear angrily at the helicopter. Helicopter goes, well, at least there's one of them. None of them died. 
None of them. As far as we can tell. They just went on as normal. This massive tsunami and earthquake that devastated the lives of millions of people and took the lives of hundreds of thousands of people didn't even scratch a population between 40 and 500. The official line is that they're, because they're such a primitive society, they're used to being attuned to nature and they could tell the animals were acting weird. They could tell the birds were acting weird and all this stuff. They found high ground. The other tribes in the area also found high ground because they didn't suffer massive casualties. So they knew it was coming in, in, a, in a way. They used their nature-based instincts for being so close to the earth they knew something was coming. I have another theory. They were warned from the future. Get to higher ground. Their God spoke to them. And the time trap, people from the future, not only would they know that was going to happen, they would warn the people on the other islands as well, because it would look weird if only the Sentinelese survived the tsunami and all the other tribes are wiped out. You just go to the other tribes and say, hey, get to high ground. Make sure you're at high ground before such and such time tomorrow. Disguise yourself as a villager, they wouldn't know. Make it as some sort of miracle. Or maybe the leaders of the other tribes are from the future. But for whatever reason, they were warned. Whether it was their own natural instinct or a message from somebody who knew what was going to happen, they suffered, as far as we can tell, no casualties. Their society definitely continues. And entire coastlines, like I said, were destroyed. You can watch the YouTube footage of the tsunami and imagine a prehistoric village surviving that. Is it possible that there is a time machine on North Sentinel Island? When I started looking at the theory that the Sentinelese were guarding alien artifacts, like I said, I figured there wasn't anything there. But what I found is far more interesting than what I could have thought of originally. I have no proof of any of this, just facts that can be put together in any way, because that's the, one of the problems with facts. But I will say this, if I had a time machine, I would put it someplace that I knew not only no one would ever go to, but the people there would have no idea what it was. And North Sentinel Island is the perfect place in the modern world for a time machine from the future. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.